So some other, one other little quirky things with anonymous type and what the compiler does with anonymous types. You notice they were generic. You could probably skip this video if you want to, but small detail, but I do want to point it out. Um, anonymous types are generic. All right, so so the generic type uh, has to have these field names or these uh, property names, first name and last name. But since they're generic, if I turn around and say uh, instance2 here and then drop another you know, 5.0 there. Well, now I have a first name, just like I did before, but now this one is a, a double. Maybe your first name is 5.0, who knows. Um, and the last one's a string, okay? So the compiler can actually reuse the same generic anonymous type for both of these, okay? Relying on, relying on generics, the first T argument uh, for the first one's going to be a string, the second one's going to be a, uh, the first, the second generic argument's going to be a string. But in this case, the first generic argument is going to be a, a double, and the second one's going to be a string. So let's, let's just, uh, let me show you here. Console write line instance dot get type, or get hash code, sure. Get type, uh, let's do that for instance, and instance two. You think I would call it instance, instance one, but instead of one, just call it instance, whatever. Look at here. Okay. So the anonymous type name here, it's anonymous type zero. Tilde 2 is two generic arguments, and then this one is string string, just like I said. Next one is double string. Okay. Now, if anything varies, for example, let's make a let's make an instance three here, and I'm going to call it first namer. All right. So now the property name differs here. Well, we can't reuse the generic type that we did for for these two because now the property name is a little different. So let me um. Let me instance, instance three, get type. We'll see that now we have anonymous type zero used for the first two, but now the compiler had to generate yet another anonymous type uh, with a different name because this property name, first name, or differs. Uh, it might be more useful to illustrate this in the reflector, so let's do so. And, uh huh, yeah main class. Okay, so here's our two anonymous types. Alright, let me click on the first one. Notice the uh, property here, first name, last name. The property here, first namer, last name. So these are, these property names are stuck. The, the, we can't, we can't uh, make these dynamic according to regular type. They're, they're stuck, so that's why the compiler had to generate these two you know, and maybe it might be useful for me to just illustrate that as, as succinctly as possible. So let's uh, let's do the compiler's work here and actually create the generic anonymous type for for this uh, first instance. And I'm going to nest it inside the class, even though the compiler didn't. Um, class, I'm going to call it anonymous type one. Uh, it takes a T and an R, and uh, it looks like it's going to have property name public. T first name get set or get hash code there you go uh, get set and then public R not T R last name and the reason why it's 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 R is because it's a different it could we we could pass something different in like we did in this case we had a double then we had a string so last name get set all right. Okay. Well, notice, notice this last name. As soon as, uh, as soon as I put an R out here, I can't reuse this type anymore because this property is called last name. Oh bother! So now I have to turn around and say, okay, well, class um, is type two, and still tr. It's still, it's still two generic arguments. Okay. And if you're not comfortable with generics, please go watch the set of generics videos. Um, and then public t for well. I can just copy this, I guess, because that's what good programmers do. We copy and paste, right? No, that's that's actually kind of bad. But then now I can change this property name, last namer. All right. So, so for this one, let's just say the compiler is going to turn around and say, uh, not identical. I mean, the compiler makes it immutable, like I showed in the previous video. But I'm just trying to keep this short. Um, at one. It looks like we got a string and a string. Okay. And then down here, we're going to have, 
We can reuse AT1. That's good. We don't have to make a new class for this guy. Okay. Uh, double string. Right? Because we just differ. The only thing we differ on is the type here. I mean, this is a 50 now. And then, but now we've got first namer. Oh, now I have to say, okay, AT2 double string. So I assume the reason why the implementers of the compiler even went to all this headache of making these generic, uh, which, and generics are actually native to missile CLR level. Again, go watch the uh, generic suite of videos if you need to need to catch up on that. But So not too much pixie dust going on here. But um, notice, notice, oh, I'm getting the red lines here because I put my R on the wrong spot. Let me let me move that over. Okay, so notice that um, yeah, I I guess I guess if you had a lot of anonymous types that had the identical property names like we did here, then yeah, you would save on having to generate a bunch of different classes for it. But I I mean, really, whose first name is a double? For real, I, I, I've never in any of my professional coding uh, have reused these property names and not have the type names be the same as well. But, but you know, maybe there's somebody somewhere in a save some a little bit of insubility overhead for somebody somewhere. Anyway, any idea? There you go.